Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Hope you are doing very well. Thank you for joining this session. Let's have a session. Today we have a session on the content, e-learning and some development process implementation. Let's start with the one, this meaningful core that is an e-learning interactivity is more of a dialogue that happens between learners and digital learning tools. Today, the purpose of this session is to actually to explain this quotation by the process, by the implementation. Myself, Rima Shaheen, and welcome to the training session series of from the Deanship of E-Learning and IT. And today's topic is an effective e-learning content development process and implementation. Okay, first thing first, what is basically e-learning content? If I'm talking about the e-learning content, e-content, electronic content, which is also known as a digital content, refers to the content or information delivered over network-based electronic devices, or that is made available using computer networks such as internet. So, in a one simple line, if anything is available on online, over the internet, in a digital devices, digital medium, you can say that is an e-content or e-learning content. Let me elaborate this e-learning content terminology and basically what is e-learning content development. That is basically is a process of creating content in digit digital form that lives in a digital space that your learners can access through digital means. So this is so simple. You will create a content which is a digital and it will be live in a digital space and your learner will be able to access this content by the digital means. So e-learning content or a course often require high quality content creation, video content development, and the creation of interactive content. These four lines, basically a core idea of e-learning content, how? When we are talking about something which is available online or a digital form, so we have to know about this, basically, how many parts of that content. If we are talking about some course, content, training material, anything which must be related to a something which is a presentable by, for example, the interactive slides, the some animated infographics, some infographics, some video content, something which have some interactivity between the user and the screen. So these all are basically a core part and today we are going to discuss how we will be able to create an effective e-learning content for the user for the students to get the productive outcomes so the first question is how to bring your content to life making a one powerpoint presenting on a slideshow or presenting in a virtual classroom that isn't a basically purpose of creating an e-learning content today we will discuss how we will able to bring life to our content which is more interactive more good for the student and engage them so let's start with the first thing that is an animated in infographic this is a one of the ingredient of our e-learning content. Let's have a look what actually the animated infographics, how it works, how it will help us to bring a life to our content. An animated infographic is a way of visualizing information using a combination of imagery, illustrations, chart, graphs, text, and other elements that are animated to add movements. So I just figured out some of the software. Basically, to create anything, we do need simple softwares and different softwares, which is basically a very core thing 
that you have to select the right tool to create your content. Here is some of the uh, different softwares are listed here. Basically, today I'm going to present you a core study of uh, actually the extract of the research, what actually needed to implement. And you just by this information, you will be able to grab the very um, informative and very helpful softwares. If you want to create animated infographics, you can use these kind of software that is Infogram, Canva, Pic2Chart, Adobe Spark, Easily, Visualize Me. So these are the different software which will help you to create the infographics. But my question is, if I don't want to go with these kind of the different software, so, so we have another option and a very simple option. Everyone have a PowerPoint, everyone using a web PowerPoint, after the COVID-19 and all the everything, everyone is much familiar with these kind of the simple softwares like the Microsoft Office. So we will see today that how we will be able to make an animated infographic with PowerPoint. So let's have a look, start with the, some of the steps and we will follow that how we will be able to create animated infographic with the PowerPoint. So the very first thing we're going to need to do is to build out our scene. And to do that, we're going to need images that have some kind of transparency in them. So this could be PNG files or even vector files. And I'm going to be showing you how you can get these files. So if you're more of an advanced user, you can head to sites like freepick.com and search for these vector files. They would come in ESP formats most of the times. And then you need a software that can read this. Adobe Illustrator is a great software for this. Uh, but if you're looking for a free alternative, there is also another software which is called Inkscape. It also does a good job at reading these files. I'm going to put a link in the description to both of these softwares. So if you're interested, you can head down there and download them. Now, if you're less of an advanced user or you're just not comfortable working with vector files, you can still get some of these images from within PowerPoint itself. What you want to do is go to Insert, then click on Pictures, and then click on Online Pictures. And while you're there, just search for whatever you're looking for and add the word illustration at the end of it. This should give you the cartoon style like images and a number of these would actually have transparency in them. I'll go ahead and select two of these and insert them. And as you can see, uh, the second one right here is an ambulance that has some transparency. I can move that around. You can also do the same by adding the word PNG. And most of the time, this would bring pictures uh, that have some transparency in them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create our very first scene here. In my case, I will be using the vector files and Adobe Illustrator. So what I want to do is, first of all, create my background. And I'm just going to click on the background picture that I have right here and click on Control Copy. So I'm going to head over to PowerPoint and right click with my mouse and click on Format Background. And then the option that says Picture or Texture Fill. And then what you want to do is click on the clipboard so that will paste whatever I have in the clipboard to set that as the background. And if you're not using Adobe Illustrator to do this, you can click on Insert and then click on Online Pictures. And then you can go ahead and just search for an illustrated hospital image and use that for your background. So next, I'll go ahead and copy each of our individual characters by doing Control C and then Control V in PowerPoint, just paste them within PowerPoint and I'll scale that to fit properly within the scene. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the exact same thing for each and every one of the characters that we have in that scene and scale them properly until they all fit well. So, and remember, if you're not doing this with Illustrator on vector files, you can simply just go to Insert on PowerPoint and click on Pictures and then Online Pictures, and then just search for pictures of a patient, for example, and just put the word PNG next to it, and you can insert that within your scene and follow along with this tutorial. So next, we are getting to the fun part. We're going to start animating our scene, and there are three ways I'm going to show you how to do this. The very first is the animation tab that you have right here. And it has several kinds of animation that you can use to bring your scene to life. The first is the entrance animation. 
and this sort of just controls when your character comes into the scene. Uh, we also have what is called an emphasy, and this doesn't bring the character into the scene, but it adds some movement while the character is already within your scene. Then we also have what is called an exit animation, and this simply uh, takes the character out of the scene with some animation. And then newer versions of PowerPoint also have something that's called a motion path. And this just gives uh, whatever subject you have in the scene some path to move around. So the next type of animations we're going to be using today are transitions. And these move from one slide to another. And if used creatively, you can do some nice effects like the one you see right here. Quite interesting. And then finally, we are also going to be using 3D models. These also have some kind of animations attached to them. For example, if I use the bird that we have right here and add it to the scene, so you're going to see that it's already animated with flapping wings, which we can use to our advantage. All right, let's go ahead and add some animations to our scene. So I'm going to click on this object right here, and I'll go to animations so we can add some entrance animations. So again, there's some options already available right here. And if you don't like any of those, you can click on more entrance effects and that will open up a whole lot more options. The key here when you're doing these kinds of animations is to kind of keep things simple. If you put too many animations and keep it busy, it's gonna look a little bit kind of shady. So I'm just gonna go for something simple like pick in. So they're gonna rise from the ground. Look at that, that's quite simple and clean. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same for the second object in the scene. If you want to see your animations, you click on animations pane right up here, and then it shows you all the animations that you have in your scene. And you can always click the play button to see what it looks like so far. So for our main subject, then we're going to use two types of animation. I've added the float in, and then I'm going to do one more thing. I'll go to uh, add animation, click on that. And then I'm gonna add an emphasis. For example, we could use maybe the theta effect so that way he comes up and then shakes his head to kind of say hi. So and here's what that looks like. It's looking pretty good so far. So for our final two characters, we're gonna use motion paths for them. And you do that by going to add animation and then motion path. And I'm gonna be using the left to right motion path so they walk across the screen. So what I'm going to do next is go ahead and adjust the path. And to do that, you want to click right here uh, where you see a little green line that adjusts where it starts from. And I'm going to move that to start just right from outside the screen. And then you're going to see a red dot on the other side. And this shows where it ends. And I'm going to drag this red dot all the way to the other side to make it so that they end just right almost at the end of the screen. All right, so let's take a look at what that looks like right now. So as you can see, they move from the left to right. So they are moving pretty fast and that doesn't look so realistic, but no problem, we're gonna fix that real quick. So you wanna click on the effect itself, which is the last one we just added, right click on it and go to timing. And then you're gonna see where it has the different durations. So you can select any one of those. And if you don't like what it has there, you can put it in manually. But for now, I'm gonna just use uh, the 20 seconds. All right. So that is already looking much, much better. But we're going to fix one more issue. If you notice, they are walking behind the characters who are supposed to be behind them. And that's an easy fix. All you just need to do is right click and say bring to front and voila, that is completely fixed. So uh, sometimes you might want to control the way the animations happen, uh, especially if you're using this for a video. And that's easy to do. What you just want to do is right click next to the animations on the timeline. And instead of on happening on mouse click, just click for it to start with previous or after previous, depending on what you're trying to do. And just go ahead and repeat the same process for all the animations on your timeline to make sure they're starting automatically and not when the mouse is clicked. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add all the rest of the animations in this scene. And then I will create one more scene and animate all the elements on that one too. And then I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to use transitions from one slide to another slide. All right, so for my very first transition effect, I want the doctor character to morph into the next thing. So he's gonna set up a transition into the next thing. And to do that, I'm gonna be using something called the morph effect. 
So what I want to do is you want to make sure that you have an element that was in the first slide that is also in the second slide. So in my case, it's the doctor character. And then I'm going to go ahead in the second slide and just click for it to morph. So if you notice, it's not doing exactly what I expected to do just yet. That's because I still have an entrance animation on the doctor character. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that and press the morph effect one more time. And you can see the way that transitions into the next scene very beautifully. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create the two final scenes that we had from that intro video. And then I will use one of these to show you how to add 3D objects into your scenes. All right, so to do this, what you want to do is go to insert and then click on 3D models right here and click on stock 3D models. So this will give you some of the models that were already created by Microsoft. So I'm going to go ahead and click on animated animals and then we'll select this little bug right here and insert that into the scene. And now you see you have a 3D model. And if you click and drag around, you can change the angle and rotate it in 3D space, however you like. And we can add our animations to it like we do any other objects. So I'm going to go ahead and do add animation and create a motion path animation. And I'm just going to do a diagonal movement. So we would have it fly across the screen, just like that. And drag that to end somewhere outside. And there you go. All right, so finally, I'm just going to go ahead and add some clip add text to our scene to complete the final scene. All right, next, we're going to talk about sound design. This is the icing on the cake when you're doing your videos. It adds that final missing thing that makes your videos exciting. And PowerPoint has a lot of options for this. So to add, say, let's say sound effect when our object comes up to the scene, what you want to do is go ahead and just click on the object. And then you want to right click on your effect panel. And then go to where it says effect options. And then where it says no sound, you can go ahead and just click on that and select, you can select one of these sounds if it applies to what you're trying to do. But in case you wanted to upload a custom sound, you just scroll down to the bottom and click on other sounds. And right here, I have a pop sound that will pop whenever the character plays. And we can always adjust the volume right here to the right. And that's what that sounds like. So I'll go ahead and repeat the same process for the other character. Okay. So when it comes to adding background sound to the scene, you go to insert media and then click on audio. And then we're going to do audio from my computer. And then I have some ambulance ambient noise here that I already downloaded. So I will add that and just get that out of the scene so that this icon doesn't show. And then let's play that to hear what that sounds like. Okay, so that's what that sounds like. Um, if you want to control the volume, this uh, knob to the right, right here, you can just go ahead and just reduce and adjust the volume accordingly. So one thing is you can control when this music stops playing. And to do that, you right click on it and say effect options. And then it says it should end. Uh, right now, I want it to end once we get out of this slide. So it ends after current slide. That is fine. Uh, with the background music, I'll show you how to make it play throughout all the slides. All right, so for our background music, I'm going to do the same thing, insert media and audio from my computer. So I have a background music here that I already downloaded from the internet. So again, I'll get that out of the slide, and I will play that for you to hear what that sounds like. Right. So to make it play throughout the video, we right-click again and go to Effect Options. But this time around, instead of asking it to end after current slide, I'll say end after, and I'll just count. I have four slides, so end after the fourth slide is when I want the background music to stop playing, and PowerPoint will uh, take care of the rest for you. All right, now let's see what all of this sounds Whoa. like. I don't know about you, but this is already looking pretty amazing. I'm sure you can impress a couple of people with a slide like that. Now, finally, let's talk about recording voiceover. If you wanted to do that using PowerPoint, that is quite simple. The first thing I would advise you to do is go to your very first animation and click to start on mouse click. 
Uh, that's because this helps you with the timing of your recording so it doesn't start when you're not ready. And the next thing you want to do is go to slideshow and then click on record slideshow and then do record from the beginning. So that's going to open this window right here. You just want to make sure that your mic is not muted right here. And then if, uh, just make sure you're selected also the right microphone from the option right here at the bottom. And once you've done all of that, you have to stay still quiet and hit the record button. Meet Ben, chief Hello. surgeon at his hospital. Ben has made it in life and has helped a lot of patients get well and feel better. And once you're done, you just have to hit the stop button to stop the recording. If you feel the need to start over, just click on this little X right here and then click on clear recordings and that will give you the option to start all over again. And once you're done, you just X out of date and you are done with your awesome video. Finally, I'm going to show you how to export this as a video. You click on file and then you click on export and then you want to click on the option that says create video. So if you did this using narration, just want to make sure that you select the use narration. And then once you're done with that, just give it an awesome name and click save. And congratulations, my friends, you have successfully created. So you can see this is one of the complete package from A to Z to create a proper animated video for your e-learning content. But this is not one. Uh, you can say this is you are going to complete uh, one e-learning content, but this is just one of the part. Why we are doing this uh, lengthy effort? Because sometimes the content is just a customized content, which is just you need to explain. You are not able to get from the internet and from any other thing. Then you you have to create by yourself. So here is a one complete package for you that you can just search out the related images, illustrations, some three D models, just using the PowerPoint, and you can do it. No problem at all. You don't need a very high quality or a high uh, expertise in a graphics or a, using a different software which is just complicated for you you can use simple powerpoint and you can do it very easily okay let's move toward the next so the very, very first next thing we're gonna one. Do. okay now we are going to move toward the next part of creating and development of our e-learning content. Before that, we have to, this is a very important thing, effective learning requires the student participation. So this is a basically a core idea why we are doing this all effort because we want the participation of our students. So how we will be able to create our content as eligible that students will be not get bored or not get paralyzed we do need some interactivity so interactive content is important to engage the students rather than paralyze them let's move to what to know about what actually the interactivity mean between the e-content we are not talking about the traditional classroom that your students are in front of you you can talk to them you uh, doing something to awake them, but you are just giving them a one screen. They are collaborate with the screen in front of them. What they are doing, we don't know anything because they are just sit there and watching the video. This is not a basically a purpose of e-learning content. We do need the interactivity between the students and the screen to get the more outcomes to engage them and give them a one perfect environment for the education for this we do need a uh, more effort to create the content more interactive so interactive e-learning content content means the learner interact with the screen and course content interactive e-learning modules use a wide variety of the media types such as audio video files presentation graphics, infographics, virtual reality and augmented reality, podcasts, 3D models and simulations to impart education and training. So now next question is what is the next part how we will be able to create a content interactive. So first part is a video. 
So how we will be able to create interactive educational video development for the e-learning? Basically, a non-linear digital video technology that allows students to have their full attention to educational material and to review each section of video as many times as they wish. For doing this, what we have to do, we have to do by the softwares. So we have just information about how many different softwares we can use easily to create the interactive videos. For this, I list up some of uh, them here. That is a Snagit, Camtasia, Explain Everything, Playposit. These are the basically a websites, Explain Everything and Playposit, and Adpuzzle, Adobe Captive, Screen Castomatic. So these, some are the software you have to download on your system. And if you don't want to be downloaded in your system for the any reason of the space or anything, you can just go to the website. For example, explain everything. So you just uh, do everything on an online no, without wasting any space or time of installation and all these things. Okay, before going to go to know how we will be able to interact, create interactive videos, let's have to see some of the example, what actually mean of the interactive videos. And we have a, some practical example. So let's have a look how many type of interactive videos we do have and we can use in our content. Branching allow viewers the power of choice to choose their own adventure and drive engagement. Instant downloads. There's no need to direct viewers elsewhere to access supporting material. Allow viewers to download documents and forms directly from your video. Capture user data. Generate sharp. Engagement. Instant downloads. There's no need to direct viewers elsewhere to access supporting material. Allow viewers to download documents and forms directly from your video. Capture user data. Generate sharper customer insights by encouraging users to share information. Leverage known data. Pass in known user information from your LMS and create personalized videos that directly communicate with each viewer. Show video content based on an employee's role and tailor content based on an employee's achievements or current ability. Sign in. Restrict content to specific employees or learners by creating password protected content. Chapter menu. Quickly add a chapter menu to your videos so viewers can jump to specific content instantly. Text annotations. Add text annotations to your video to support learning and reinforce messaging. Custom CSS. You can apply custom CSS and change anything from the colors and fonts of your video. You can even style the player itself with custom branding and colors. Custom animations. Take advantage of CSS to add your own custom animations on text annotations. Pause and play. Set parameters that pause a video automatically, encouraging a user to interact with your video to resume content. So here you can see there is an option of pause a video and select and creating and making a decision. Basically, the purpose of the interactive video is to engage the student in a such a way that they think some, something and they do accordingly what they want. If we are talking about the changing the font or customize the CSS and all these things, or there is a, some query question uh, that uh, what would be uh, the uh, next part of the story, and here is a just a time to think and make a decision. So basic purpose of interactive videos to create an interaction between the student and the screen. Customized timeline. Disable a user's ability to skip along the timeline and ensure they don't miss any of your crucial content. Remove the timeline completely and create truly blended learning experiences. Quizzing. Test your viewers' knowledge by incorporating quizzing into your video. Adaptive quizzing. Change what the viewer sees next based on correct and incorrect answers to a quiz. Pre-response quizzing. 
allow viewers to input truly personal responses and gain sharper insights. Set custom threshold. Set multiple questions within your quiz and you can control the past threshold based on your own needs. Display live results. Display real-time results or grades as the user progresses through a quiz. Unlimited language support. Your browser is able to change and localize any language used in your video, just like a web page. Better still, you can create bespoke localization files using a simple template. Viewers can read any text in your video, regardless of their own native language. Draw and highlight. Draw on top of your video to highlight key points of information. Future proof. Keep content relevant by incorporating interchangeable images within your video. Product interfaces or company procedures can be updated instantly without the need to develop a brand new video. Templates. Develop an interactive template and apply your logo, branding, and interactive functionality to every single one of your videos instantly. Calendars. Do you have an upcoming event or conference? Then you can embed calendar invitations within your video and remove barriers for onboarding. Navigation. Guide guests to your upcoming event or conference location by embedding maps within your video. You can even take advantage of your viewers' inbuilt GPS to guide viewers directly to your location. Live webcasts. Broadcast your conference live, both Q&As, conduct employee social network streams, engage audiences and encourage brand exposure and receive instant feedback by including social network streams in your videos. Embed widgets. Embed any HTML widget that you feel can enhance your audience experience. Anything from contact forms, job applications, employee satisfaction surveys, polls, anything you can think of, you can now embed within a video. Links. Link to any external content on the web. Track known viewers. Track both individuals and groups to learn exactly how users are interacting with your video. Lead generation. Drill down and learn key information on each individual who watches your content. Find out what information they care about the most and what aspects of your product or service they engage with and create bespoke targeted sales leads. Multiple devices retain interactivity on desktop, tablet, and also on mobile via the Fuse app. And finally, responsive. Retain your interactivity when you want your video to be responsive or launched in full screen. So basically, these are the different examples. You can see some of them are related to you as an educator. You can choose them. And now you have a broader idea about the interactive video um, content. So now uh, the question is how you will be able to make the educational interactive videos. For this purpose, I choose the one of the software that is a Camtasia. Yeah. And now we are going to apply how we can use the software and we can create an interactive video to give a life to our content. Camtasia's quizzing features make it easy to gather feedback from your viewers. In this video, I'll walk you through how to create and export a video with a quiz or survey, along with how to receive quiz results. Before we start, it's important to note that videos with quizzes or surveys made in Camtasia must be viewed in the TechSmith Smart Player. And there are three simple ways to use the smart player. One, upload a video to screencast.com, which uses the smart player for all its videos. Two, host a video on your own website and upload the smart player. And three, upload a video and quiz as a SCORM package to a SCORM compliant LMS. Okay, I want to add one thing here that here is a three different uh, extensions. Uh, you can say they are giving you option. You can just host by a website or using a screencast matic or the third one is a scam package. Basically, we have a blackboard which is eligible to accept these kind of the packages that is exported as a scam package. So you diff uh, simply just download or just save your content or a video or interactive video uh, in um, this extension extension and you, this package, the storm package, you will be able to upload in a Blackboard very easily and you can use, you can share that content with your students. Now that we know where we can use quizzes and surveys, let's get started. 
To add a quiz, choose Interactivity from the Tools panel and select one of the options. The first option adds a quiz to the timeline. Quizzes added to the timeline can be moved freely to any point in the video. The second option attaches a quiz to a specific piece of media, which then moves with that piece of media as it's positioned on the timeline. Adding a quiz turns on quizzing mode, which allows you to quickly add more quizzes by clicking on the quiz track above the media or the timeline. To toggle quizzing mode on or off, click this arrow. With the quiz selected, add questions and modify quiz options in the Properties panel. By default, the Question tab is open with a blank question already added to help you get started. Choose the question type, enter the question text, along with answers to the question, set the correct answer, then decide if you'd like to give viewers feedback depending on whether they get the question right or wrong. For example, send the viewer to a specific point in the video if they answer incorrectly. To add additional questions to a quiz, click Add Question. When finished, click this button to preview the quiz. It's important to note that quizzes are not displayed on the canvas when previewing a project. Select the Options tab to modify the quiz name and choose whether quiz results are displayed to viewers or if the quiz is to be scored. To produce a video with a quiz, choose either screencast.com or local file. For a local file, choose any of the MP4 with Smart Player options or choose Custom Production Settings and then choose MP4 with Smart Player. Continue through the production wizard until you get to the quiz options. Select this box and enter an email address where you'd like to receive your results. Then, choose whether or not viewers can take the quiz anonymously. Click here if you'd like to modify the appearance of the quiz buttons by changing their text. This is handy if you're creating a survey as opposed to a quiz. To make this video and quiz into a SCORM package for a SCORM compliant LMS, Select this option and enter your SCORM information here. When finished, Camtasia will produce the video and the Smart Player to go along with it. If you're on a Mac, choose screencast.com or local file. For local file, choose MP4 or main concept and make sure both export as web page and include quiz are selected. Click here to set up an email address for quiz results and change the appearance of quiz buttons. To make this video and quiz into a SCORM package for a SCORM compliant LMS, select this option and enter your SCORM information here. When finished, click Export and Camtasia will produce the video and Smart Player to go along with it. Upload these files to your website or LMS to view your quiz online. At the end of each day, you'll receive an email of results. Results can also be viewed online at results.techsmith.com. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. So this is the best way to create an interactive video. See, we just watched that we are just creating a quizzes and survey and poll. So basically, being educators or a content which is related to education, we do need uh, interactivity with the students by the questions. So this is a best way to give them a one of the quiz or give them a one of the poll or a survey to just awake them and engage them with the, your content. Okay, let's talk about this, some other chunks of the content, the interactive educational content. So which kind of the different websites you can use to create them. So polls, quiz, and surveys, you can use the survey monkey and the slideshow and the videos. You can use the slideshow and the YouTube webinars, join.me and Webex. That is the good one. And interactive timelines, if you want to use this one, then time glitter is the uh, one of the websites you can use it and the multimedia storyline that is a storyline so you if you want to create a, these chunks of 
um, content in your e-learning course or in your uh, training session or anything which is just going toward uh, the digital media or digital means so you can use these kind of different websites to create them okay one of the really important thing uh, yes, we do need to create a videos, we do need the animated infographics and, and PowerPoint presentations and graphics. So uh, to creating this one, the one of the very important part of the screen recording, because most of your content is customized content, and you need to record your screen, you need to apply the things to tell the students. So you have to know about how many different options do you have to, to record your screen. So we have listed up here the eight names different. You can use these screen recording softwares to record your screen very easily with your voice over. Or even if you want to just record your screen, you can use them. And uh, if you are using a Mac, you have a one option of the quick uh, time player. So you can use that one to record your screen very easily. how teacher uh, create the interactive lesson so now the next question is let's have a look how we can use the website to create the interactive uh, lesson so we have a one uh, a website that is at person.com let's have a look we, how we will be able to create a one complete lesson by this website so, hello educators and welcome to another week of Okay, now I uh, want to add one thing here, what we are going to do if you are uh, looking forward to already made videos, if you want to download videos from the YouTube and just you want to add in your custom part in it, so this is a best option for you. If you don't want to waste your time to create a video first and then you uh, add uh, some interactive content on it, so you can just simply uh, select uh, from the YouTube and you just customize according to your need. So you can see here is option to give opportunity to students to make a decision or their opinion or their comment to just pause that video and give an interaction between the content for the students. So that is a very, so this is a one complete package for you if you want to create a already a used video which is uploaded on a YouTube and you want to customize according to your content. So this is the best way to use this website. So now you can answer me one question. What do you think the e-learning implementation is giving more power to education system? Yes or no? Or what is your opinion about it? Thank you so much. Hope I explained well today. I just presented up the different softwares, different uh, content uh, part, which we can use in our uh, e-learning course, e-learning content to present a one powerful, powerful, complete one uh, development of our e-learning content for the students to just interact and just engage them with our content. Thank you so much. If you have any question, please ask me.